Welcome to the Retire Right Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice. There's no acceptable alternative if you want a plan to live well and on your terms. Complete financial advice equals complete peace of mind. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to Retire Right with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. Today is a great episode. I'm very excited about this. The title of this episode is Everything You Need to Know About Traffic Tickets in New York. A little unexpected, and I'm excited to get into this. We have a special guest today, and our guest today is New York traffic ticket attorney, Michael Block. Michael has been practicing law since 1986. He received his bachelor's degree in history from SUNY Stony Brook, and then he went on to complete his JD at SUNY Buffalo. Upon passing the New York State Bar Exam in 1986, Michael Block worked as an associate attorney for several firms in New York City. It was during this time that Michael began representing taxicab union members at traffic hearings and gained experience defending drivers in traffic cases. In 1988, Michael started his own firm. In almost 30 years of practicing law, Michael has successfully defended clients all over the state of New York. From Buffalo to Montauk, in matters such as speeding tickets, DUI, DWI, cell phone tickets, commercial truck violations, taxi and limousine, commission safety hearings, oath hearings, misdemeanor criminal offenses such as reckless driving or aggravated unlicensed operator. Michael is a member of the New York State Bar Association, the New York County Lawyers Association, and the Association of Motor Vehicle Trial Lawyers, for which he served as treasurer from 1990 all the way to 2007. Good afternoon, Larry and Michael. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Doing great. Eric. All right, Larry, you brought Michael in today. How did you guys meet? Michael and Rose were introduced to us as uh, wealth management clients from uh, from another client, and they came in, and you know we've been working with them for you know for multiple years, and just so happened after a few years, I needed Michael's services, <laughs> so so I can personally vouch how good a job he has done because. Between me and my children, we've used his services more than once. <laughs> so, uh, so Michael does a great job, unbelievable job. So I thought it would be great to kind of bring him on the podcast and let our clients hear uh, really a, a lot about what he could do, but also about what you should know about when it comes to uh, traffic tickets in New York. All right. I'm excited. Let's get started. Michael, today we're going to be discussing, I guess, both speeding tickets and cell phone tickets. Has one area become more prominent than others in your practice, Michael? Larry, I would say it this way. In this area outside of New York City, namely suburbia, Long Island, Westchester, Rockland, and upstate, speeds are still king. You see most activities, at least in people we represent, are getting speeding tickets. In New York City, I would say that not the majority, but... I have more tickets for cell phones and improper use of portable electronic devices than anything else. No, well, that's interesting. So most people still are not using hands-free. That is right. Uh, very interesting. So we're going to talk a little bit about speeding tickets first. So, you know, some of the things that kind of the layperson talk about when we hear, you know, is points. So how many points does a speeding ticket carry? And why should we be concerned about points in and of itself? Larry, speeding tickets carry anywhere from three, four, six, eight, and 11 points. It depends on how fast over the speed limit the driver is going. The ramifications are for possible suspensions of your driving license and also insurance ramifications, which could come into huge money. So how many points do you need to accumulate before maybe your driver's license is suspended or revoked? Great question, Larry. The judge has discretion of suspending you at any time. I've seen judges suspend people for one, six, or eight-point speed if the facts of the case merit it in that judge's opinion. But we always talk about 11 as the magic number. Once a person accumulates 11 points, the judge really thinks hard and seriously about a suspension. And I guess at more than that, you can actually have your driver's license uh, taken away. That is right. It could be suspended for a period of time. It could be revoked. The judge at that time could order you to 
retake the written and driver test. So a lot of people get speeding tickets and they don't realize that not only does a speeding ticket cost some money, but then a few months later, they get hit with it with insurance. So what should they do if they get a speeding ticket? You could always go represent yourself in court. You might or might not do well. You can hire an experienced attorney to try to help get you out of the tickets. In New York State, other than New York City, you usually, with the assistance of an attorney, will do better and you will take a lot of points off. In New York City, it's all or nothing. You're going to either be found not guilty and get no points and not pay, or you're going to be guilty and get all the points. But certainly, even if you go by yourself, you still have some chance to win to get rid of the ticket. Yeah, well, we all see from TV that you shouldn't represent yourself in court. But e even if you think you were really speeding, should they also call you and, and talk to you? Absolutely. I would think that most of my clients, most of the people who call us, think they're actually not guilty and don't admit to speeding. But it's basically the same thing. Even if you think you're 100% guilty, you kind of have maybe a slightly less chance than if you are of reducing points or of defeating the ticket. Yeah. So especially if you've had a ticket before, even if you ha had it, th there's no harm in you know calling your office and, and, and discussing that with somebody. So sp speaking about speeding, you know, the, so a police officer did not have a radar gun or a laser device. How can the officer know how fast I was going? It's unusual. That, that circumstance is very unusual, Larry, but officers are trained to estimate speeds with their eyes. They receive hundreds of hours of training. The ones in New York City use the old Floyd Bennett Field. They usually can estimate speeds within five miles an hour or less of the actual speed. But usually there's a device, and the latest device is a LIDAR. It's too technical to get into the differences between LIDAR, radar, and laser. Okay. So if, I, if I've received three speeding tickets in the last 18 months, what are the potential penalties if I'm found guilty? If you're found guilty of three speeding tickets within the same 18-month period, your license will be revoked for six months. Guaranteed, no matter what. That's right. Wow, that that's definitely could hurt. Uh, we've heard of uh, this term called driver's assessment. What is that? So that's a relatively new way that New York State has to collect some revenue. If you get six points within an 18-month period, and we're talking about dates of receiving tickets, you get a driver assessment for $300. Each additional point leads to further assessment. So it's like the hidden cost of getting a ticket. Besides your insurance, besides the fine, you could get hit with this driver assessment. Interesting. So there was no sign posted, you know, sometime. Why did the, the police officer give me a ticket? In New York City, the speed limit, unless posted, is 25 miles an hour. That's a recent change. About three and a half or four years ago, it went from 30 to 20. But there does not need to be a sign. So let's talk about cell phone tickets. What are the ramifications of cell phone tickets and what exactly is improper use? A cell phone ticket, if found guilty, will put five points on your driver's record. It's a really interesting thing that the state has done. First, it was no points in a fine. Then they raised it to two. Then they raised it to three points. The fines are usually not big. So people, as you were talking about before, would just go ahead and pay them and then not realize the ramifications of getting five points on your driver's license. Right, so that's five points out of 11 for just one ticket. Just one ticket. Wow. Is there a difference between a cell phone ticket and an electronic device ticket? The ramifications are the same, Larry. It's five points. So what you asked before as well, just to follow up on that, the improper cell phone use, the phone is in your hand and it's in the vicinity of your mouth and your ear, and or your ear, I should say. The other one, the improper use of a portable electronic device, it's in your hand, you're looking at the screen, your fingers are touching it. But the conviction has the same ramification. Interesting. And how can I use my GPS device without getting a ticket? 
It has to be mounted to your car, in your cup holder. You just can't touch it. You can't touch it. This is all, always an interesting debate with myself and my, my wife. So you get to a red light, you're not moving, and you grab your phone and you look at a text and then you put the phone back. Could you get a ticket for that? You could. Technically, you're not guilty, but I'm sure if you're testifying in court, the cop's going to say you're moving. So it's always best to pull over, turn off the car. There are actually cell phone stops now on some parkways in the state. So you, even if I wasn't talking on the phone, you know, why could I get a ticket? The, the cop, if he or she is looking to give you a ticket, is going to give you a ticket if that phone is in your hand and it's close to your mouth or it's close to your ear. And the same thing with the portable electronic, it's in your hand. So never put the phone in your hand. Hmm. And you just mentioned before about the fines. So, you know, paying a fine, could you pay a fine and avoid points or they kind of go hand in hand? In New York City, if you're found guilty, you get the points and you pay a fine. In some other jurisdictions, they reduce them to lesser violations where you pay a fine and get some points. It depends on the jurisdiction. So in other jurisdictions that you can knock it down, but in New York City, it's all or nothing? That is right. That's interesting. So what should you do if you get a traffic ticket? If you get a traffic ticket, again, you have to choose whether you're gonna go contest it, whether you're gonna go alone, whether you're gonna bring an attorney. Usually attorneys can represent you without you being there. It's your valuable time that attorneys are saving. Mm. So. Talk about some of the other implications of traffic tickets. Traffic tickets, if they're validly written, they're dangerous situations. Running through red lights, talking on the phone, which is distracted driving, speeding, driving too fast, turning from the wrong lane. So everyone's personal safety is involved. And again, back to before, if you accumulate too many points, you lose your license. Hmm. Is there any, anything else you'd like our audience to know about tickets or about what you do? When you get a ticket, don't always assume that you're defeated. Don't always assume that you're going to get points. I've represented thousands upon thousands of tickets, people with tickets over more than 30 years. I'm successful very often. There's usually something we could do. Always call my office with any questions about any kind of ticket. We can tell you if there are points or not. We can tell you what impact it might or might not have on your insurance. There's almost always something that could be done about a ticket. All right, Michael, I, I've been listening to this entire conversation between you and Larry, and it is fantastic. It's, it's always, I always wonder about different, I, I don't know anything about points, I'll be honest. Uh, uh, in my younger days, I was much heavier on the gas than I am these days, but that's just because I'm cheap, right? I don't, I don't want to take that risk. Uh, but I do have a question for you, um, a couple of them. I remember when I was younger that if you were caught going 25 over or more in, I, I grew up in Washington State, I was told that law enforcement can actually seize your vehicle. Is there anything like that in the state of New York? I've never heard of such a thing for that. Maybe. Absolutely not. Okay. Maybe it was just my parents trying to keep me safe. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> that, that's, that's a good tactic. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It, it worked. It's, you know, it's worked for, uh, no, what, 45 years the, now. So 25 was the magic number. That's that, that, really that, interesting. They, I guess they thought it was safe. Yeah. Only 24 over. Yeah. I wouldn't believe 15. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to, they don't want to drive 50 over. So maybe they just settled on 25. Uh, mm -hmm. pr pretty smart idea. All right. And so you're also saying, because I found it interesting, you had said cell phone tickets and electronic device ticket. Right. So there's a difference there when you say electronic device. Are we talking about a, a coffee maker that I have installed in my car or are we talking about an iPad? That's that's pretty good because it's almost always a cell phone. It could be an actual old school Garmin, I guess, electronic mm -hmm. device. But the interesting thing about that, Eric, is that the things that people tell us as to why they're not guilty, they'll say I dropped it and I was just picking it up. They'll <laughs> say I was using it as a GPS. Mm -hmm. I heard a judge tell me once that someone said it was his razor in his hand, like a like an electric shaver. <laughs> so usually it's a cell phone, though. And then the cop, if you cross examine him, he's going to say, yeah, I saw that it was a um, iPhone. It was black in color. So mm -hmm. it's usually pretty specific. You're not going to get away with that. It's a razor. Come on now. <laughs> that's, that's pretty. I'm sure you have a lot of stories on what clients have told you and said, well, no, no, it was this or, or that. How do you help them to say you know what, 
if you're guilty of it, it's better to go in there humble and let me do the talking, but don't act like a fool, if you will, in the courtroom. How do you have that conversation with somebody who's just being stubborn? I would almost always say, Mr. or Miss, you are not coming into the courtroom with me. Usually people mm. retain us. Good point. And they don't go at all. But the ones who go, I usually say, just have a seat outside. Let me do my best here. I've heard what you told me about the case. Because some administrative law judges or just judges are naturally not nice people. Mm -hmm. And they will actually elicit something that a person doesn't really want to say. Most administrative law judges actually are pretty nice, but you never know. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of court, Michael, I've heard a lot of people say, I'm not going to, I'm always going to plead not guilty and go down to court because I've heard that the police officer doesn't show up, my case gets thrown out. Does that really happen? That's a great question. In the outer boroughs or the suburbs and the rest of New York State, let's leave New York City on its own island as it is for a minute, the cops usually don't show up on the first time. The case is usually conference with the district attorney. So the cop doesn't have to show up. Sometimes you conference it with a cop or a prosecutor, but most often they don't have to show up, at least on the first shot. In New York City, the cops have to show up, at least 90% do. Okay. And just to follow from that, sometimes it takes two no-shows of a cop for you to dismiss the ticket. Oh. Sometimes it takes one shot, sometimes it takes two. So if it doesn't show up, they can for the case and you got to go back again for a second time. That's right. That's another reason why you don't want to go by yourself. How many times can you go to court? Man, that's good. Sure. That's really good to know. It's, it's like a crapshoot. You don't want to, you don't want to bet your future on, oh, they're just not going to show up. No, that's, that's a long shot. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, I, when I was a younger man, I, right before I got married, we had an issue. I had a small truck. My fiance and I had gone out to the movies and I did not have the truck registered. I did not have any insurance on it. And while I was there, the fuse blew for the lights. So we're driving home in the dark. <laughs> and it was, I got pulled over. I wasn't speeding, but I got dinged for so many things. The fines were about $450 total. And I knew I had to get on the ball. I went completely dressed up, went to court. I had secured insurance. I had gotten it registered. I bought the fuse and replaced it, took pictures of it working, the lights working. The receipt for the fuse went in and talked to the judge, super nice, but I know it could have gone the other way. I know that if I had had some money, I probably would have contacted someone like you to help me in that situation, but I was very lucky because they saw everything was professionally, well, as professional as I could be at 19, uh, professionally set out with all the receipts, every repair, everything done that was supposed to be done originally, and he dismissed everything. And so I, I got away with 75 cents for the parking for the courthouse at that time. So I got lucky, but I know that that's not the case for everyone. So Michael, I know this next question is kind of an odd one, but what do you think the percentage of people in New York or where you specifically work, how many people do you think actually reach out to an attorney compared to just trying to do it on their own? Do you have any, any guesses on the percentage? That's a wonderful question. I, I would say within New York City and the borough of Manhattan, more than half reach out to an attorney because we have a lot of professional drivers, uh -huh. taxi drivers, Uber drivers, limousine drivers who really can't oh, get yeah. points tacked on. And outside of New York City, I would say far less. I, I would think a lot of people plead guilty or a lot of people try to go and do it on their own. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, one more question, Michael, before we wrap up. So tell me a little bit about your day. How much time do you actually spend in court each day? I spend most of my time in court, Larry. I spend some time at my office. I help my friendly and capable staff with client questions. Sometimes I speak directly to the clients from my office, but I spend the bulk of my day in traffic court. So you get to know some of the judges that you see in court. Yes, say. there are a limited amount of judges and there are actually a limited amount of police officers. Great. Thank you, Michael, for your time today. Hopefully you will not get a traffic ticket, but if you do, I would recommend that you contact Michael. Like I said personally before, you know, I've used him twice, both times. I was very happy. So you can reach out to Michael, Michael Block's office at 212-227-9008 or visit his website at michaelblocklawyer.com. 
Thank you so much, Michael, for joining me today. Thank you, Larry. Hey, Michael, this is great. I really appreciate it as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Eric. You bet. And Larry, thank you for bringing him in. Oh, thanks, Eric. You bet. And one last thank you. Thank you all for listening to the Retire Right Podcast with Larry Heller. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family and all of those that have that lead foot. Uh, Definitely share it with them. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Heller Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time.